All right, let's talk suspension. Now I said we were gonna make this a full-on race cart. Well, full-on race carts need adjustability. So I picked up these A-arms second hand. Now you can see this has a, uh, a lowered shock mount. It's got a little curve in the lower A-arm and the upper A-arm is adjustable. So we can adjust camber. So we're gonna have to rip our tabs off Mount these up and the front end should be done. Now I'm still going to use the Polaris Outlaw front hubs and there's a reason for that. Um, I'm still using ATV parts and that's pretty easy. These things only weigh 200 pounds more than an ATV. If you think the engineering tolerances of an ATV are exactly to their weight, you're probably wrong. Um, I'm sure the tolerances on these are very high uh, like I've said, I've driven this black one uh, pretty hard and none of the factory components have given out, not even the bearings. Uh, brakes are solid, you get a brake on each wheel. This is not a small rotor for a front brake. And the best thing about it is the aftermarket support. You can bolt these right up, have adjustable aftermarket A-arms set up on your cross cart for a minimal amount of money and minimal fabrication. Let's get to work. All right, it's time to mount the shocks. We're gonna start with these because I actually like these shocks. They, they ride very smoothly. They've got a decent amount of travel. We'll give them a try to see if they're gonna work. And if they don't, we'll switch to a different one. Check 2.3, springs and shock absorbing. Shock absorbers are free, but all types of active shock absorbers are prohibited. It means you have to have pretty much a coilover. Um, one unit per wheel, and it shall be of the coilover type with screw springs, so what we're using. Um, springs should be made from steel. Springs from composite or titanium are prohibited. Uh, springs and shock absorbers shall be made so that the bottom plate cannot touch the ground. So essentially, these need to bottom out before this hits the ground. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, we need a place to start, and that starting point is the mount for the shock. So, since I've changed out the front A-arms, I may need to trim this more. Uh, looks like we're going to get a little bit of stiction, which is side play on your shock, um, if we mount it here. So these are longer. I've already trimmed this one, but I'm just going to trim it a little more and get this aligned a little better. It only needs to be trimmed maybe an inch or so. So I'm going to take this measurement, then I'll show you a slick little way I mount the shocks. All right, so we've got the suspension bar in, and you can see there is adjustment on here available. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a scrap piece of one and a quarter or one and a half, and we're gonna whole saw cut it, but we're gonna set an offset to cut about halfway through. And we're gonna attach it on here, make some tabs. That'll get this, the shock standing up uh, more straight, so we get more action out of it and we will have minor adjustment in this. Now, before you tack this bar in, uh, remember that we have a six to seven degree uh, rake up on the front end, so you want this bar to match that angle because that's where your geometry is, and you only have to cut this at a 90 degree 
uh, hole saw cut, which will make it easier. Now you want to start with a big piece so that you can fit it in your notcher um, and then cut it afterwards. So I'm cutting a two inch section. I've got it centered so my hole saw is going to be offset um, five eighths of an inch. And it's gonna be centered at one inch. I'm gonna make a hole saw cut on both sides and then I'm gonna cut each side off and we'll have two ready for the shock mounting. And don't forget to use um, the hole saw for whatever you're attaching it to. Uh, so in this case, one and a quarter. Now when I do an offset cut, I reset this right after I make it. So that way I don't waste a cut on maybe a longer tube. All right, here's what your piece should look like. Just a hole saw. Looks like I did three eighths instead of five eighths. That's all right, I just took a little extra trimming. Then you put this on here. You make tabs for this, and you can put this anywhere you want. You have an easy shock mount, you have triangulation, and it's mounted to a cross member. So not only do you get the strength from the welds, but this is pinched in here. So it would have to bend a lot of things to break loose, which is exactly what you want when it comes to suspension, strong not just two tabs randomly placed somewhere. All right, so we've got our tabs made. I'm not gonna walk you through every single tab we make. Uh, there's been plenty made so far and everybody's measurement is going to be different. All right, so you get those on there, put your holder in place and then boom. Look at that, that's super nice. Let's get that tacked up. I was getting ready to tack this up and I realized I've got this set at five inches of ride height, but that's not to count uh, sag for when all the weight's on here, when this is sitting on the shock itself. I'm just gonna add a two by four and uh, that'll give us a good gauge to start. I mean, we're tuning the suspension um, this is a new ride height for me. I don't know the exact numbers and this is kind of my process anyway for how I do suspension. All right, sorry, I forgot to turn the time lapse on for the welding, but you can see it's all tacked up. Um, just lightly tacked because we don't know if this is the final place or not. Most likely we're going to change it. So now comes the fun part. We're going to see if this shock has enough stroke to handle its full travel without the bottom hitting the ground. There's only one way to do that, and that's just to remove the spring and put the dampener on by itself and then let it down, see where it hits the bump stop and see if we still have clearance. If not, uh, once it's on the ground, we can set our preference uh, inch above the ground, uh, half inch, and then adjust this accordingly to that. But who knows, it might just work out. And keep in mind, this is all also based on your tire size. These are 21s on here. We're using 18.5s, but like the other ones, it's very low on tread and uh, I've let all the air out. So it should be pretty close to 18.5. All right, the spring is off. Uh, make sure the other shock is out of the way. Uh, we're only gonna do this with the one shock. Here we go. All right, as you can see, it's right on the bump stop as it hits the ground. So we are going to need to lower it, but that creates problems as we're gonna have to loosen up the spring so that we still get our five inches of ride height or we might want to start looking at swapping it for different shocks. Darn it, so close. <laughs> Literally within a quarter inch. All right, so I've got these Amazon specials. They are quite a bit shorter, but they're really, really stiff. They, uh, they're a dual rate. Um, the number of coils per inch dictates how soft they are, so these are soft once they all compress, then it gets into the larger coils, which gives you 
a higher rate. I cannot find the actual rate for these. So, I'm gonna go two directions with this. Ugh. I'm gonna do some of this off of camera, check it out. But I think what I'm gonna do is put a two by four under the frame. I'm gonna readjust this for that amount of clearance, put the spring back on and see what our ride height's gonna be. And if that doesn't work, then we'll start working on the new spring. Now you can see that has changed our ride height dramatically. Three two by fours is about five inches. So we've added two more. Our ride height is without preload. It is about seven and a half inches. This is more than that uh, five inch cross cart ride height. So it looks like we're gonna have to swap shocks out. And no, we are not. We are not going to go with that. Um, these shocks look incredibly cheap on something that we're going to be going very fast in. Um, they look stiff and they are about an inch short. Now they are adjustable, but I've got them adjusted all the way out uh, to only about four threads left. And I'm just uncomfortable about this. So, Let's, uh, let's do some math. So <clears throat> we have this shock, which is a nice shock. It's a Fox podium shock. Very nice, right? But it's too long. It's 120 pound per inch spring. And it is mounted, I don't know, two thirds out on the lower control arm. Now what we can do is we can move it out here and look how well that lines up. Now, what we have to do here is do some, some calculations, okay? So, what we're looking for is the shock angle factor. Okay, now that is when you take a shock at 90 degrees, this is 120 pounds per inch. So, if it compresses one inch, you've put 120 pounds on it. If you've compressed it two inches, you've put 240 pounds on it. So when you change the angle of a shock, you need to find, and the formula is shock angle factor or ACF, and uh, that is cosine times the angle, okay? And that formula doesn't tell you how much your shock is degraded, it tells you what size shock you need. So if 120 pounds Per inch or 120 pound spring rate were correct for this changing the angle of it would require a stiffer spring now we are at 30 38 degrees we can probably just round that to 40 because we're not going to put it all the way out here now there's multiple factors involved here um, we are moving out on the a arm so We'll get this welded up, we'll load some tabs onto here, and uh, I'll do some math before I do all that to make sure it's all correct. All right, it's gonna get crazy, so buckle up, it's time for math. First, we're gonna take our stock figures and work those out. Now, here is your A-arm. Let's draw it over here. Here's your A-arm, okay? This represents the mounting point. This represents the wheel. And then there's gonna be a shock mounting point. Okay, so you take your total arm length. Now I just used to the mount of the hub, not the center of the wheel, and that's 17 inches. And that's gonna stay the same for both setups. Okay, we're gonna do a stock versus modified comparison. So the arm is 17 inches. Okay, now the next measurement is 
The shock mounting location stock is 10 inches. That means it's 10 inches from the fulcrum of the pivot on the rotation. Our modified setup that we're thinking about doing is 14 inches. Okay, now next comes shock angle, which is also an important figure in this. So here's the shock. All right, on the stock, it's about 30 degrees. On our modified setup, since we're moving it out, we're going to, going to have more angle, which is going to cause more ACF, and we'll get to that. And this is going to be 43 degrees, pretty steep. Uh, this is a little steeper than what it is. That's more than 45, 43 degrees, but we'll get into that. Um, so let's start with the motion rate. Um, hope I'm calling it that right. Uh, but basically it's points C versus A minus points C versus B. And there's a leverage point on that and a calculation. I'm not gonna get into all that. I'm just gonna give you the numbers. So stock, um, it's 120 pound spring rate we're using for both. So first we are going to take the ACF or the shock angle factor. Now 30 degrees um, times 120, uh, you're getting essentially 87% of that spring. All right, so 120 pound spring turns into a 104 0.4 pounds per inch spring. Now we are going to account for uh, the distance out on the arm, which further reduces the, the spring effectiveness. And essentially you just divide 10 by 17, which gives you the ratio. And that ratio is 0.588. You multiply 104.4 times 0.588 and you come up with 61.38, 61.38. Now, that's about half of this spring, but it makes sense if you think about preload. If you get on a bike and it sags one inch, uh, this number becomes 240 almost immediately, which makes this number become 120, which is about a quarter of the weight of the quad. So all of these factors mix in. So our final spring rate for this setup is 61.38 pounds spring rate. Now for our cross cart, if we move this out, we'll start with the uh, ACF, the shock angle factor, and we are increasing this. So it's gonna be pretty steep. Um, the, the shock angle factor for 43 degrees is about 75%, which pulls that into a 90, 90 pound spring rate. So 120 just became 90 because we put the shock at an angle. Now let's factor in moving the shock out on the arm, which gives leverage back to the spring. Now, that calculation, 14 divided by 17, gives you 0.82 times 90 for the corrected uh, ACF gives you 73.8. 73.8, so we, we're taking away leverage by changing the angle, but we're giving leverage back by moving it out on the arm. Now. 61.38 divided by 73.8 will give you the increase in shock effectiveness, and that is 120% or 20% stiffer than the ATV. And that's with no preload on this spring. That means we are right in the range for adjustability, we are losing the amount of suspension travel we have, but we are gaining authority in the spring. We're getting our ride height perfect. So this is enough for me to give that a try.
All right, obviously the math on suspension is way more complicated and there's a lot more formulas and calculations, but I tried to just simplify it to see if we were in the ballpark to do this. Um, and we definitely are. So it's time to make some more tabs. I'm gonna use this as a mounting point. It's a lot of metal here. This is a good place to put a shock. So it's time to make more tabs. All right, we've got our tabs made. We're gonna put them right around there, right on that weld, right on that strong point. Put in your top bolt, do a little test fit, see how they're gonna go in. Now, this is set up at ride height, but we still have to account for a little bit of sag. So I'm gonna put like an extra inch in for that. Now these are gonna have less sag because we've stiffened up the spring. Well, it definitely has that cross cart look. Um, if you look at cross carts, their shock angles are pretty aggressive. And I'm pretty sure it's the same reason as what we're doing here. So let's shake this off the blocks together. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Look at that. Those are nice springs. Look at how smooth that would be. And that's without any preload. These are fully adjustable preload. So if this turns out to be too light, too easy, all we gotta do is put a little preload in. Fantastic. Look at that. Cost of this, zero. I love repurposing things exactly like this. Cross cart started with a man that took a four-wheeler and turned it into a buggy. That man owns La Hose Industries and he's out of Spain and he made the original car cross cart. He makes the cross cart that looks similar to this. This is somewhat of an homage to him and his legacy. Uh, I know a lot of people think this looks like a Sierra car, but Sierra car looks like they did the same thing. Just looked at the European and Spanish cross carts and found this one piece design for the, the hood and the windshield and kind of adapted it as their own. This looked like an easy way to assemble one of these to me. So yeah, it does look like one, but the dimensions, everything is, is completely different. Front suspension done. All right, let's have a look at the back here. Now, I triangulated this area for a very specific reason, and this bend and this roof line comes in right here to give all kinds of mounting options for any kind of shock. Now, this bar directly meets with this one so that it's just plug and play, make tabs and go, but if you have longer suspension or different suspension, you can put in cross members anywhere you want to put any suspension you want in. So we've got a little work to do. Um, the A-arms get boxed on the ends, so we have to get some flat bar. We have to bend it to this angle, and then we have to make tabs, both bottom and top, but this should be fairly quick and easy. We're not gonna do any math on this because I already use shocks in this location. So it's just a matter of making the mounts and, and getting them in there. Uh, we are going further out, which is gonna stiffen up this spring again, but change the angle. Essentially increase it 20% for the increased weight of the buggy. Now it's more important on the back because the engine rides in the back, not in the middle. So let's have at it. Sorry, my workbench is getting a little crowded. No use, we're not using it anyway. So I'm gonna take some three inch flat bar 
I'm gonna bend it to this angle and I'm gonna box this in. All right, when notching the back end to put your uh, upper shock support piece on, you need to measure this angle because it is at an angle. Now it's off of 90, mine is 72.79, so we'll call it 73 off of 90 is gonna be 17 degrees. So you wanna put your notch offset, half the tube width, and then also angled so that this sits flat and you have good geometry. All right, here it is. Got the bottom two tabs, got the shock mounted. I put an extra two by four in for sag. There's the upper mount. I measured the degree, it was about 15 degrees with the tab off the shock. Now all that's left is to tack it into place to the other side and she'll be on her wheels. All right, rear shocks are mounted. Let's, uh, let's put it on our wheels for the first time. It's already on our wheels. There we go. Look at that. So nice. So nice. That's crazy. Who, who would have thought five inches would have worked? This actually looks pretty plush for five inches of ground clearance. That's without the motor. It's gonna be more plush. And we have all of our rear preload to adjust if we want. Let's get rid of these two by fours. They've been in the way from since day one. Now the player shocks do come with this little dude right here. It's a 60 pounds per inch spring, but I don't see how that's 60. Um, they do go on the top of this, so it's kind of a dual rate, but these are kind of worthless. And how tightly we're gonna have this tuned, they're not gonna do much anyway. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's nice, really, really nice. In the back end, if it ends up being too tight, I mean, we don't have the engine in. Engine's gonna add some weight, gonna add some preload. This is all adjustable, it's all tacked in. This is the reason I tack everything, because you never know what you're gonna need to adjust by an inch or a half an inch. And with these adjustable shock mounts, retuning it would be too easy for right height. Oh yeah. This thing is going to be crazy. Now that's it for suspension. We're all uh, on our wheels today. Let me know what you want me to do next. Um, I don't do the seat until after the engine, but our split point right now is I can either do the pedals or I can do the engine. I can kind of guess what you're going to choose, but let me know what you want to see and we'll make that the next video. I'm still waiting on the front rack once I get that in, we'll be able to push this around, steer it. At some point, we're gonna have to do the final weld on the chassis. Now that the suspension is done, I, I usually don't do the final weld until after the engine's mounted, the seat's mounted, the dash is mounted. Um, I mean, obviously we're not gonna change any of this stuff, but I don't wanna put it together, tear it apart, do final welding, put it all back together, tear it back apart, do final welding. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Let me know in the comments if you want the engine or the pedals next.